Happy Friday, everyone. It is time for our second episode of Junk Drawer Art featuring um, Miss Riley, which is me. I'm just putting my foot on that because I'm afraid that it might um, blow away. I'm actually outside today. I hope you guys had a fun time yesterday doing your magazine extensions and making them nice and creative. I got to see a lot of pictures. They're very cool. Uh, today, it was a beautiful day, so John and I decided to come outside. And we did our whole lovely project and we recorded it and then we found out that there was a stray cat wandering around in our yard and after a little bit of a, a disaster with involving the cat, uh, my water got knocked over onto my beautiful poster, um, our video got interrupted and the camera turned off. So I am here again um, with a recording to show you what we did and John is hanging out in the sandbox right, right over that way. Um, so. We're going to have fun with this. He probably won't be in the video today, but I can show you the things that he did. It is five-year-old approved. So we are doing leaf rubbings today. Actually, not leaf rubbings. We're going to be do, doing leaf printing. Some of you might have done the old school, like collect the leaves and put them under the paper and rub them with crayons. This is going to be kind of like that. So the process is the same. The first thing you want to do is head outside. Um, there's our natural area. We kind of walked through it. We looked for leaves. Um, these are the leaves that we actually collected. So try to find leaves that have really nice veins on them. Um, some of these, yes, they've been colored already by me and John. So if that's, they look a little weird. Um, we even grabbed a dandelion just to see what it would do. Um, I grabbed some old cilantro out of the garden. So even if it doesn't have a lot of like really strong veins on it, see, there we go. Um, just something that'll get a cool shape. And actually I have some of the rubbings right there so you can kind of take a look. I keep calling them rubbings. They're not, they're, they're prints. Um, we are actually going to focus today and I got my stone there, the wind is blowing, um, on printmaking for like our little mini art lesson and the kind of printmaking I want to take a look at. Um, it's kind of hard to see, I know, with the, with the sun shining, um, but it's called a monoprint. So when we think about printmaking, we usually think about... Um, stamps. You know, an artist carves something into wood or they carve something into um, vinyl or linoleum or metal even, and they make a print again and again and again um, in different colors, repeating the pattern. We even have some artists who would do silk screening, which is another type of printing using a stencil and silk and fabric. Um, this type of printing, monoprint, mono means one, it is um, gets a unique image, you can make the print one time. So you get one, what we call a pull from it. Usually the artist will take some kind of paint, um, like acrylic paint or even an oil-based paint, and they'll paint on plastic or um, a piece of glass or even a piece of metal, and then they literally lay the piece of paper on it to transfer it to the paper. And we call that a monoprint. One of the most famous monoprint artists was actually um, Ramari Bearden. You see his name right there. You can see a little bit when I hold it. And this is a piece that he did that was a monoprint. I know it's really hard to see. You can just see my trees in the background. Um, I like to talk about Romari Bearden because he was actually born in Charlotte, where I am from and where I teach now. And he moved to Harlem when he was about three years old. He grew up in Harlem um, in the early 19 to mid 1900s. Um, and he was grew up during the time of the Harlem Renaissance. Um, he became a social worker and then he grew into um, a really amazing artist who focused a lot on social art. So a lot of his art depicted the everyday lives of African Americans and some of not only the struggles that they faced, but also a lot of the strength and resilience that they showed. So um, this one is actually, it's a picture of, um, it's a painting, it's a monoprint of um, musicians. So you can kind of see their instruments, you can see the artists. I know it's a little hard to see, but if you go online um, and look up Romari Bearden, they have some really great resources um, for kids and things that they can do that involve his artwork. So so we're going to be pulling kind of our own mono prints today. Um, I have my leaves. We are using just magic markers again, so something simple and just white paper. I'm going to go ahead and move the camera so you can see a little bit better. I'll move this back a little bit and move my pouch. Nice. All right, perfect. So the way that these mono prints really work is you really want to put a piece of plastic so you have something hard and flat underneath. Um, and I kind of showed you like a little example of what I did even before me and John got started. John and I got started. So you want to take the leaf 
and I'll kind of use this as my scratch paper because you're not actually painting or doing markers on your actual paper. You are actually marking on the leaf. This is one that John did earlier. Um, I'm gonna take a fresh leaf to show you. This is a piece of ivy that I found. So you can use as many different colors as you want. You can stripe it, you can dot it. You are literally treating this leaf kind of like it's your canvas, like it's your piece of paper. So I'm just gonna use some different colors. You can make it rainbow. Uh, let me pull this one back out for the other side. So I've kind of taken my ivy leaf here and I've colored my design on all the different parts. You can do the whole color, the whole thing the same color, it's up to you. And once I have the print that I want, I'm gonna lay it down on the piece of paper. Try not to move it, because if you start sliding, it's gonna smear it. And I'm gonna very firmly use my fingertips, or you can use the pad of your hand, to push down all parts. The thicker that you cover it, and if you get every single dry space of the leaf, the more thorough you are with marking, the better the print's going to look. So I'm gonna pull it up, nice. And I have kind of like this pretty little leaf print going on here. Um, I can show you some ones that John and I did earlier. Let me pick this up so I can show you a little better. Um, so this was the leaf that John colored. Um, he did these two without help. So you'll notice if you have a grown up to kind of make sure that you get it nice and thick um, and covered and to push it down firmly. This is actually a really cool one. This is some cilantro that I found. Um, so you can do more than one leaf. And we even experimented on this page with the daffodil. So we took another one that kind of wilted and we, we covered it all the way over in marker and then kind of pressed it to make a little bit of a print. Um, you can use them again and again. Um, I know we called it a monoprint. Um, you can do it more than once, but you'll notice that each time you do it, it's going to be a little bit different, which gives it that really unique quality that a lot of people love to see in a monoprint and in art. So I hope you guys enjoy this today. Um, go outside, find some things in your yard, get some sunlight, color them with markers, and see what kind of beautiful prints you can make. If you have any questions or anything you want to show me, um, you can contact me here on YouTube below. You can leave a comment. You can contact me on Facebook if that's where you get the video, or if you're one of my kids, you can send me a dojo message. Um, I hope you guys have a great weekend, and tomorrow John and I are going to get a little crazy in the kitchen with an art project, so I will see See you guys then. Bye.